Okay. Shooter, are you ready? Stand by. What up YouTube, Gunner South here. Um, wanted to come back and do a uh, review on a gun um, that I have and have had for a couple years now that I don't think gets uh, enough attention. Uh, you guys seem to like the reviews I do and I have done plenty on 1911 style pistols. I've done brief kind of reviews on Glock but I, I feel like we, that's pretty much covered and then I've done <clears throat> a brief review on the uh, 9mm AR. So this one's going to be a little different. Um, this is um, going to be a review on the EAA uh, Witness Match um, single action. Um, the gun is actually, well, you can, I don't know if you can read match right there. Match, M A T, match. But you can see that it is. Um, made in Italy and is actually um, let's see if I don't see any markings on there this is actually a Tanfolio pistol and EAA is not the manufacturer but rather the importer of this pistol and these pistols in general you see a lot of these um, and you see a lot of them called match or excuse me you'll see the witness and their polymer and some of them are double single action I really wanted to concentrate on this particular model because I don't feel like it gets sort of the attention it deserves and the recognition for you know sort of what a what a good pistol this particular one is because it's just, I think I feel like it gets lost in the noise of all the polymer cheapo ones. So I wanted to spend some time and just kind of go over this particular gun and why I like it, why I've you know how I discovered it and sort of things like that so a um, little brief history about this pistol in particular I was uh, looking I had just started shooting um, USPSA um, initially that's the first competitive shooting that I, I found um, and then I was looking for I, at the time I was shooting a 9mm in um, limited so I was shooting limited minor because uh, I didn't know any better, and as anybody will tell you who shoots USPSA, you know, shoot major. Um, so I was kind of on the search for a pistol um, to cover the role for my USPSA gun. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. So I was shooting a limited minor with a Browning high power. Uh, and obviously anybody that shoots USPSA will tell you you need to shoot major if you're going to shoot limited. Um, since I had a high power I could not shoot um, production because it's a single action gun. So I was on the look for something. Um, I was looking at the MMP Pro series. At the time I didn't believe I liked Glock. Um, and so I was I was looking and I, I had pretty much decided I was going to go with MMP Pro. I had a been exposed to those, I, I like them, or I was actually going to go with the XDM series. Um, and I was looking on the uh, trader boards, the gun trader boards uh, in my area, and this one came up, and I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. I've not ever seen one of these before. What's the deal with them? 
Um, what really intrigued me about this gun was that it was a single action, it was metal, and it was in 40 cal. Um, and so I began to research into this pistol and everything I found online about it um, was positive. I didn't see, you know, I saw some negative comments about the finish. This is a wonder finish on the stainless. Uh, you know, some people said that it didn't hold up, uh, whatever. But there really wasn't a lot of information out of there. And so I went ahead and it was cheap enough and I took a chance and I bought it. And I, I honestly couldn't be happier. Um, to me, this is a, a phenomenal budget competition gun. I picked it up, I think, around 485. It was used, so about 485 bucks I got this. Um, and right out of the box, um, it was a, a shooter. So first off, single action trigger. I'll show you real quick. Nothing in there. Single action. Um, single side safety. It is a CZ pattern, so the slide rides in the frame. Uh, I'll talk about this. It's, it's full metal construction, so it's got a nice weight to it. You can see it's got a rail in the front, which really adds to control the snappy 40 cal. Um, full metal guide rod. You can see how much that mag release sticks out. For competition, that's great. Um, the trigger, I don't know if you can see, has a built-in over travel. That's what that screw is. And, I don't know if you can see this, it's actually got a pre-travel adjustment screw in there too. I'll show you that a little later. Um, single action. This is the large frame version. There is a small frame which is more closely patterned after the original CZs and it is uh, a little narrower here. Um, so if you're buying this one and you need the magazines for it, get the large frame magazines. What you can see on here is aftermarket sights. I have put Henning sights on this. Um, I found it to be a very necessary upgrade. Um, I did not like the stock sights that came on this gun. Um, and when you look at these, that's just a great sight picture. Henning does great sights. What does it say? Um, speaking of Henning, so Henning makes these extended base plates for the magazines. The magazines normally come like this. Um, it's sort of a flush fit look, which you can get, I believe, uh, 15 in these. Uh, when you go with the extended, when you go with the extended, you can actually get um, 19 to 20. They say 20. I usually get 19 in there, and that's enough for me because honestly, um, most most of the stages that I was running at the time were indoor stages. And we don't have like. You know, 30 round count, something like that. So one, one reload was plenty enough. I didn't need to didn't need to go to 20 rounds. Um, the mags are available. They're out there. I'll give you just a look at some of the lines here. It's already flat topped, although not serrated. The muzzle looks very nice. The sights are a dovetail, so they slide in from the front, and then the rear. Nice extractor, exterior extractor. Uh, you can see the ramped um, barrel ramp there and there. Again, slide is riding in the frame. People complain about the sharp edges on these. Um, I haven't found them to be terribly sharp. I mean, there's a pointy one right there. Um, and so all most of the sharpness is right here at the end of the frame uh, right here But for the most part, it's pretty well rounded out smoothed off Nowhere where your hands are regularly is any sharpness nothing on that um, You can see this had originally some Hogue wraparound grips on it um, as I learned, you know to not use the wrap around grips for competition. I just cut those and then sanded them down and added some grip tape. Uh, been happy with that. It's a very smooth action. I know I'm not showing that very well, but it is very smooth. Um, and I'll show you how to break this down real quick. So you get your notches right there. Just line them up and you can see I've had this thing apart a number of times. Done. So 
all of the machining in here is pretty well done I didn't see a lot of like chatter marks or anything like that very smooth um, here's your action um, and there's your adjustment I don't know if you can see it but the over travel is right in there or your pre-travel you can stick an allen wrench um, down in here and adjust it without having to take apart the gun so that's great um, show you the slide so the other cool thing about this gun is the uppers can be purchased separately so this is a 40 Smith & Wesson upper you can purchase these uppers separately for around 200 bucks I think um, and you might or might not I've heard I have not done that yet but I've heard conflicting reports as to whether or not you need to send it off to them to have it fitted um, there's a little smoothness there I don't know if you have to have it fitted or if you can just purchase it and hope that it fits um, full length metal guide run these for you competition guys can be replaced with something heavier uh, I didn't find it to be necessary so uh, the stock one's still in there let's take a look at the barrel here ramp um, pretty good pretty good fit um, you can see I put some rounds down it um, haven't cleaned it recently but everything's smooth um, you can see where it's wearing right um, but that's just part of the gun uh, reassembly is a snap um, let me find, let me grab that real quick and then you just hold it back on here and you'll notice something or some of you might have already picked up on this um, it is it's a clone it's a CZ 75 clone so here is my wife's peel one which we bought after we've got this but I just wanted to show you a little bit of the the similarities to this this happens to be a decocker model um, but frame and or slide in frame um, plastic guide right on this this is a this is a PO1 uh, this is a double action but they operate the same they have the same takedown ability right there Let's see if this one's a little tighter I haven't actually put that one together but these I think can come in a double single action configuration then they would be nearly identical um, but I just wanted to show you if you put these next to each other you can see the similarities down to how they take down everything else. I mean, well, the upgrades I've done to this are the sights, and I put a 13 pound, I think it's 13 pound hammer spring in this. There's a, it's a short hammer spring, um, and that cleaned up my trigger enough to be a nice, very short reset. Not a lot of over travel. If I were to show you the over travel. Alright, so that's click and then I can't go back any further because I've got that adjusted up here. Reset is alright. There. Then a wall. Then a break. Now, complaints about the trigger. Um, tends to wobble in the frame a little bit don't know if you can see that it's a little play there so Henning makes a flat trigger system that is an eventual upgrade for this that is oversized fits tighter in that slot and is actually a straight down trigger and then I'm gonna get the small one so it'll sit back in the back of this to where you have a flat you know you don't hit down here is a different trigger than up here um, but since I'm not shooting USPSA right now it's on the back burner um, and the trigger even if you leave it as it is pretty freaking phenomenal um, 
you know the weight on this thing just really keeps it down what I would find is it would, it would I, I, when I was shooting this in USPSA I was shooting factory 40 and I gotta tell you guys it's still tamed 40 Smith & Wesson the rail I think is a, is a great addition here now the problem with the rail it adds weight um, but it also makes it illegal for IDPA um, I believe it's longer than three or whatever the whatever the rules are from for IDPA to let's see we don't want millimeters we want inches so in IDPA there's certain rules about how long this can be so you're looking at three three point three um, I think that's too long if I remember correctly if I remember reading it some people have suggested that if you just cut the frame down and then you have an IDPA legal gun um, I hadn't gotten that far one thing another thing you want to keep in mind is just the general weight of this thing so yeah probably if you cut that off you would make you would make weight and you would make with the rail but there's still the unrailed versions of these floating out there in gun broker and they're floating out there in nine millimeter too or 45 I think 45 would be but if you could find one without the rail in nine millimeter and it's a full metal frame gun that's riding inside the frame and it's single action that would be a awesome ESP gun that would be a, just a great ESP excuse me that would be a great ESP gun for IDPA because you wouldn't have the rail it'd be full metal construction you would still get the single action trigger which is great and honestly the recoil control that comes from having the slide in the frame um, so yeah I mean I always kind of keep my eye out for one of those to show up on gun broker um, we obviously have um, we obviously have some other projects that are going on so I'm not actively looking but if you guys like this and you wanted to shoot one of these in uh, IDPA I would suggest getting on gun broker looking for the nine millimeter version that without the rail sometimes they're called Springfield P6s uh, it's basically I think Springfield uh, imported them for a while uh, under the the P6 name um, so a lot of people have turned these into competition guns so be aware that you're not getting one that's just shot out um, but um, if I ever do get back into USPSA, you're going to see me shooting this gun in limited if I don't shoot in production because it's just a great gun. It lets you get really up in there with the with the um, B retail um, right out of the box. It's better than that para uh, 1640 that I got. Um, the magwell could probably be beveled, but it's nice and big, and it probably they uh, Henning also makes um, magwells you can attach or weld on there. Also, if you're interested in this, this is the budget version, right? This is the match. They actually make um, limited. I think it's called EAA or EAA Witness Limited, and it is already set up for limited. It's I think it's got a full rail uh, or full dust cover. It's in 40, it's single action, and it's got a magwell. So if you can splurge on that, you know, by all means, skip some trouble, go straight to the limited. Um, I bet it's a bet it's a great gun, but if you want to just get into shooting and you're looking for a really cheap limited gun uh, and 40 cal, um, you could do a lot worse than this um, because it's double stack 40. It's got some support out there that's not too expensive. It's got a great single action trigger out of the box that you can easily reduce the weight just by taking the hammer spring down. Uh, don't go more than under 13, I think, because you start getting light strikes. But if you wanted to go less than that, they sell um, firing pins, extended firing pins. Henning makes great sights. Henning makes a great trigger. This is like a Henning advertisement. But he's pretty much the only guy that makes Tenfolio competition parts that I've found. Um, so, yeah, you're going to be dealing with him if you... Oh, man, I was glad I got this pad. But you're going to be dealing with him if, uh, if you um, are trying to work one of these up. Uh, but you could do a lot worse than one of these, especially if you found one and the, without the rail and 9mm, you could just go and shoot that in IDPA and, and that's it. So I'll go ahead and end this video here. If you have any questions about this or if I didn't uh, cover anything you'd like to see, let me know. I've got obviously a little grip tape here, grip tape here. Uh, I can really get on that. Safety. 
that would be my one another one complaint for these however would be you can go ahead and buy the ambidextrous safety because USPSA might start you with offhand so there's that um, otherwise great pistol never had a single malfunction with this never had a single failure to feed never had a single failure to eject uh, admittedly I was shooting factory ammo um, but the only thing that would get me on occasion and this, this is user error when these things were loaded up to 20 if you don't slam them home they would fail your feed just because it was wasn't stripping off the next one because that's your fault um, here let me know if you have any questions and uh, I'll make more of these reviews I might come back and review this one but I think we've seen this too um, give me a like subscribe and uh, we'll make some more of these videos thanks a lot YouTube